Hello everybody! <laughs> hi there, uh, hi viewers at home um, as well. Uh, thanks very much uh, for, for having me here today. It's a, a pleasure uh, to speak at, at Rare Disease Day and welcome you all of course to uh, Zombie Science at 1Z. Uh, now uh, let me start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Dr Austin. Yes, here this is what I look like, just like that uh, there. Uh, now, I am a theoretical zombieologist um, up at the University of Glasgow and head of the Zombie Institute uh, for Theoretical Studies, uh, which is based there on the campus. And I would imagine most of you are probably recognising me uh, from my days as an inventor. Uh, now, my most famous invention, of course, uh, was this, uh, what we call the ultra-safe concrete children's trampoline. Uh, now, I'm sure you... You probably have one of these in your garden, obviously, uh, re remember the advert with the song, if you jump too high, your bones will break and you will die. Yes, because it's fantastic. Now, uh, uh, they are somewhat out of fashion uh, here now, but they're actually really quite big uh, in Japan at the moment, uh, which is terrific. Now, um, I have quite a few qualifications. Uh, I have my master's in zombiology. Uh, I also have my doctorate uh, of uh, pepper that you can see there. Uh, yes, that's my old pal Doc Fina. Now he was some fella there, you know, had, had quite a bubbly personality. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, now, now I, I was also um, extremely proud to be voted uh, by Time magazine uh, as Zombiologist of the Millennium, uh, which is, is quite an honour. Uh, now, my research has taken me on expeditions uh, all across the world, investigating thousands of potential uh, zombie outbreaks. Uh, <laughs> now, obviously being a scientist, I also spend uh, many hours in the laboratory as well. Um, and recently I had the, the humbling honour of being appointed to the role of Zombiologist Royal uh, to Her Majesty the Queen, uh, which is a great wee job. And that just involves me nipping down uh, to Buck Pal about once every six months just to give Queenie a wee check over uh, and make sure she, she's not a zombie. So you'll be relieved to know uh, she's doing fine at the moment. Uh, now all of this has given me an extensive knowledge into the rare disease that is uh, zombieism. Uh, and I will attempt to share some of that knowledge with you uh, very briefly now. Uh, now, we're going to divide this into sort of three sections. First of all, we'll see what a real-life zombie might actually be like. Uh, second of all, uh, we'll see what might cause people to become zombies. And then finally, uh, we'll get quite hands-on to see how we can try and cure people uh, when they do get this disease. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's get started uh, and find out a bit about zombieism. Now, when you encounter a new disease, uh, the first thing that you do is attempt to obviously identify the symptoms. Uh, so what we'll do now uh, is we'll have a quick look at a video showing you a zombie in action. Uh, and what I want you to do is just watch, try and identify as many symptoms as you can, and I'll get you to shout them out at the end. Now, and I just say it's not, it's not a Hollywood zombie you're about to see here. It's, it's going to be Davy, uh, the janitor uh, from my work. But he's really very good at being a zombie. Uh, so watch carefully, and as I say, spot as many symptoms as you can there. Uh, so there's Davy. He's not being a zombie quite yet there. He's, he's just getting ready. So he's about to lie back and play dead for us now. So there he goes, now he's about to start his transformation into a zombie. So it begins by rising up there, you see, you might say, right, oh, yes. One of his arms fell off there, appears to be decomposing slightly there. Now, next we'll show Davy the sun. Now, Davy is, is normally a big fan of the sun, don't need to tell you why. Uh, but notice, not as a zombie, no longer interested in that. He's trying to bite me now. Now, don't be concerned, obviously stabbed him with the pen. Uh, now, he's not in much pain, but he, he does finish up by letting out this really quite fearsome moan. Now, and I'd be grateful uh, that you can't hear that moan, because it was really, it was very frightening. Uh, I mean, if you could hear that moan right now, oh gosh, you'd all be touching cloth. Uh, so you would, oh yes indeed. Uh, you know, because I was there myself, uh, uh, and, and you know, I quite vigorously followed through uh, when I heard it there. But, uh, oh gosh, there's no need to worry now. That is, after all, why I wear the brown trousers, you see, ju just in case. Uh, so can you tell me some of the symptoms that you saw there? What was Davy getting up to as a zombie? <coughs> That's quite a good impersonation of him. <laughs> yeah, you're all doing there. Come on, guys, what did you see? What did you see in the video? 
His arm fell off, absolutely. So he appeared to be decomposing like a dead body. Very good. What else do you notice? He tried to eat me. Yes, indeed. He had a craving for the human flesh. That's also quite unusual. Any other ones? Uh, yes, he, he was reading the sun, or is not so interested in the sun. Now, uh, basically, when someone's no longer interested in something that they used to like, uh, in this case, uh, the boobies, uh, as we see, uh, we call that a change in their personality. That's what we, we call that. Uh, so there's some great things noticed there. Well done. Uh, now, there's a, a list of the symptoms that you would see in a movie zombie. Uh, now, of course, if a zombie was actually real, the symptoms that they demonstrate uh, would be very different. Now, we don't have time to go into them all in detail, all these ones on the list, but we'll have a look at one of them. Uh, now, as we know in the movies, zombies do like to consume living flesh, and, and if they've been good on the weekends, a, a little bit of brains as well. Uh, now, when a person eats another person, we call that cannibalism. Uh, so we can have a quick look at some cannibalism live in action for you there. Uh, so there's Davy uh, cannibalizing away. Now, when it comes to cannibalism, there's no medical cause to explain that behavior. So there's no excuse for what Davy was doing there. Now, it's far more... Oh, it's supposed to have stopped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, as I say, so nothing medical can happen to your brain to make you only want to eat living flesh and brains. So rather uh, than a desire to consume living flesh, uh, we think that zombies would have a desire to consume any food source. Now, because of the other symptoms that affect a zombie, it makes it not very good at telling what it's eating and also not very fussy about what it does eat. So it will happily eat a person uh, when it comes across one every now and again. Now, you'll see, in fact, along with uh, desire to consume living flesh, we've lost a few other of these symptoms up there. And the four we're left with are our potential real zombie symptoms. So that's the shuffly uh, zombie walk, the zombie personality, the zombie diet, uh, and the zombie moan as well. Now, can anyone tell me, how do zombies traditionally spread their disease uh, and create more zombies? By biting people, exactly. Now, um, a bite is a wound inflicted by the mouth and in particular the teeth. Now, I've brought along to show you today uh, one of our replicated human arms from the Zombie Institute on which we can do a test bite to see what it might actually look like. So I'll just prepare this uh, for you now. And now obviously, when I say it's a, a, a replicated human arm, I, I, I do mean it's a, a, Swiss, a Swiss roll uh, there. Uh, now, now the, now, the Swiss roll has many similarities to the human forearm. I don't know if you can see at the back, but it is quite a similar shape. Uh, and then obviously, if we broke your arm open right now, don't, don't worry, we're not going to. Uh, but if we did, uh, you'd be full of strawberry jam as well. Uh, now, if we pretend that the person being bitten here is also actually Swiss, it makes it even more accurate again there, so it does. Uh, now, uh, can I have a wee volunteer to bite into this in a zombie style for me? Uh, who would be up for helping me out with that? This chap here has been volunteered. F fantastic. What's your name, sir? Jason. Jason. Give Jason a wee round of applause there. Just stand up where you are, Jason. That'll be great. Oh, okay. And now, question number one. You're not allergic to Swiss rolls, we'll are you? We'll soon find out. Okay, because, I mean, it is pretty funny because your face blows up really big <laughs> and stuff, but it, it's safer if you're not. So what you're going to do is just bite into that in a zombie style for it, just in the middle there. You go for it, Jason. Go for it. <laughs> My, my, my word, at least some of it left there. Fantastic. Give Jason a big round of applause. Grab a seat there. Fantastic. Good work. Now, if we have a look at our replicated zombie bite, now what we can see is the bite will cause general tissue damage by tearing and scratching at the skin. Uh, now there's obviously a risk of some serious spurtage uh, there if you hit a major blood vessel. So thanks for not doing that today, Jason. It's quite a, a nice floor. Uh, but most importantly, it creates this nice big open space. Now this opening is perfect for things like bacteria and viruses to sneak in and infect our Swiss person. Uh, now, Jason, I'll give you that back. You can enjoy the rest of that. Now, there you go. Now, yes, I mean, it's so out of date, you'll hardly even notice uh, there. Uh, so it's not just being bitten by zombies that you need to worry about. It's also what you eat as well. And to find out how, we'll go on to our next section and see why people might become zombies. Now, we at the Zombie Institute believe the most likely the way that zombies will come around is through something called a prion disease. Now, don't worry if you haven't heard of that before. Now, what a prion is, is a form of protein
protein that's produced naturally in all of your bodies. Uh, now, uh, when you get a, a well, here's a, a 3D photograph of some prions for you there. Now, you see this one on the left? This is the normal kind. You'll have lots of these in your body right now. Now, when you get a prion disease, a rogue form of this protein, a bit like the one on the right there, sneaks into your body and converts all your normal ones of these to look like versions of itself. Now, that causes a lot of damage to the body uh, and certain symptoms, and it particularly damages the brain. Now, I don't know about you guys, I find this quite a, an amazing image, because it's not incredible to think these things are so small and, and so dangerous, and they're made of pasta. I mean, is, is that not, not incredible there? Because uh, obviously this is your, your sort of a, a penny type of pasta here, and this is spaghetti, I believe. Um, obviously, I, I don't know what kind of pasta these arrows are uh, there, but I mean, you, you, gosh, you do get all kinds of pastas uh, these days. Uh, you even get Thomas the Tank shape. Uh, Mind-blowing, I know.